Am I on? No, I'm not on. Am I on now? Yes, good. Right, let's pray, should we? Father Hans, thank you for this, uh, this scripture that we've just had read to us, Lord. And I just pray that as we look at it now and think about it, Lord, that you would uh, speak to us, that you would encourage us today, that you'd help us on our walk with you and, Lord, on our walk alongside other people. So just encourage us and challenge us, Lord, we pray. Amen. I want to um, really look at um, the little bit of the scripture that's just been read to us from verse 4 through to verse 8. It's a bit I'm concentrating on. Um, it might be a little bit disjointed, where you say, oh, it's, it always is with you, but um, um, maybe it'll be a bit mis uh, disjointed, but I hope it's, uh, that it'll come together as we, as we go along. I want to just uh, pick out a few um, sort of headings as a, uh, to help us here. The three particular words I want to concentrate on is anxiety, prayer, and peace. Um, now, these th this little bit I'm going to say now, I didn't make it up myself, it came from um, commentary or something. It says, anxiety is a problem. It's a problem we are told to put off. Do not be anxious about anything, be anxious for nothing. Prayer is a procedure we are told to practice. I've never heard prayer described as a procedure before, but um, I think it means it's you know it's something we should do and do habitually, like you you know like you would with a procedure. Prayer is a procedure we are told to practice. With prayer and petition, let your requests be known, or present your requests to God. And peace is the product we are promised by God when we deal with the anxiety and we pray. Peace is the product we are promised by God. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. The peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. So those sort of things will, will, will come up as I go along and go through this. Now I want to look at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again rejoice. I looked up in a, a dictionary just to, to get a dictionary definition of the word rejoice and it said, this, this will really surprise you, it says to make joyful <laughs> or to be joyful um, and then it went on to say to be merry. Um, how merry do you feel today? And I guess that's where we get Merry Christmas from isn't it? To rejoice in the Lord, Merry Christmas. It also said it's to gladden or to exult. Um, so there you have it. However, it's a little bit more serious than that. In the Sermon on the Mount, when talking about persecution, Jesus says, rejoice and be glad in the face of persecution, because great is your reward in heaven. That's, that's really interesting. That Great is your reward in heaven. And I think that is the key thing to this word rejoice and rejoice always I'll go on to talk in a minute or two about things that, that, that are difficult um, but we can rejoice because of heaven if we're Christians we rejoice whatever because of heaven as great is your reward in heaven and that enables us because we, we understand that that ultimately that is our destination. If we believe us in Jesus, that's where we're heading. That's what this life is about. It's a preparation for heaven. And, uh, and because of that, we can rejoice and be glad, whatever the circumstances. So Paul can confidently say, rejoice in the Lord always. Now I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but how many of us rejoice in the Lord always? always it's impossible isn't it and yet there is a sense in which we can and should and do rejoice but I can see all of you you're saying you, you you've got that look on your face you said 
Yeah, but you don't know what's been going on in my life. You can't expect me to rejoice if you knew what was happening. And of course, in some cases, we do know what is happening. And uh, we have to be careful about that. Actually, there is someone who does know everything that's going on in our lives. That is God, that's Jesus, knows what is going on in, in our lives. And because of that promise of heaven, there is a sense in which we can rejoice, and we do rejoice, um, even though we're going through painful things um, and difficult things. Actually, um, I don't, this, I'm sure this will have happened to all of us at some time, but somebody comes bounding up to you um, and says, they're a Christian, and they know you're a Christian, they come bounding up to you and they say, well, are you rejoicing today, friend? And they don't know, you know, what's just happened or whatever. And I have to make a little confession. I, I, I'm not a violent person most of the time, but there are occasions when, when that sort of thing has happened. I just want to punch them on the nose, to be honest. Because um, it's so insensitive, isn't it? They meant well. Uh, and of course, uh, there is a real sense in which you should be rejoicing, but circumstances that weigh us down and all the rest of it. You know, it is okay to feel hurt and sad and left out and overlooked, to be in pain, to be grieving, etc., etc. That doesn't mean to say we've lost our faith, does it? We're standing in faith, believing in Jesus, believing that he is the answer to all these feelings and things. But we need to be sensitive to one another um, before we go bounding up and say, are you rejoicing today, brother? Um, because of that's, that's the world around us. Amongst us, there is sadness. Even today, there will be people here who are feeling sad and hurt and overwhelmed by their circumstances. And they don't need to be told, rejoice. However, there is the whole truth that though we may not feel like rejoicing, we'd still have something to rejoice over if we're believers. The life of Jesus the promise of eternal life with him. When we're suffering and we're hurt and we're in pain, or even if we're just struggling with everyday life, which happens, doesn't it? You know, Jan and I are finding life really difficult at the moment because we're trying to sell a house. I mean, that sounds petty, doesn't it? But one minute we're up here thinking, it's great, it's about to happen. The next minute, no, it all goes wrong. And you're, oh, you're down in the dumps. And then you have to clean the place. You know, we don't normally clean the place, but we do when we're having visitors, when we're having people come to view it. And, and you know, you, you get your hopes up one minute and the next minute they're, they're dashed. And it, it's tiring and, uh, and, and a bit hurtful. And, and you can end up struggling with life, just ordinary everyday life. Everyday life is a struggle at times, isn't it? There are times with great joy and great happiness, but other times when it feels just the opposite. But in the midst of all of this, in the scripture, the Lord does encourage us not to be anxious, not to be anxious, but stresses that he is the God who is near us. Where is the Lord? Where is the Lord today? He's in us. He's in us. If we're believers and followers, he is in us by his Holy Spirit. And he encourages us to lean on him. And he promises constantly to be near those who call upon him says let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near he then goes on in, in verse 6 he says he encourages us to pray rather than to remain in, in anxiety how many of us have um, perhaps had things that we start to get anxious about and it goes on for days and days and we forget the most important thing that we should do to pray, 
to call upon the name of the Lord. Finally, it's not finally as in the end of a sermon, um, it's just finally we remember to pray. And some of us are more prone to anxiety than others. Fair enough. But remember to pray. And the sooner we remember to pray, the sooner things start to change. Verse 7 says, when we, we are told to pray and petition and, um, and to bring our requests and offer our thanksgiving and the peace of God will come into our lives. And then you look back and think, why didn't I do that earlier? Have any of you had that experience? You've been down in the dumps and you've been anxious, you've been hurt, you've been whatever, and it goes on and on and on. And then one day you remember you pray and sort of miraculously, you can't even say how it ended, it just begins to change. And life is worth living again. We need to, tr however, having said all that, we need to train our minds and our thinking and our hearts and we need to focus them on the right things. The noble, the pure, the lovely, the admirable. To get our minds focused on the right things and the right reactions. Um, please don't be like a friend of ours. Um, when Jan, when he asked, how are you? You know, how are you today? And Jan decided to be truthful. And she told him how, how we were today and the particular things going on in our life. And uh, this Christian friend said, uh, oh, I can't listen to any of this. So the, because the Bible tells me I've got to keep my mind on what's noble and what's right and what is pure and whatever's lovely and whatever's admirable. I can't, I can't listen to all this talk you're, you're, you're pouring out to me. Please don't be like that. And I don't think the scripture, though the scripture encourages us to be, to concentrate and to, to focus on the, the noble and the admirable and all the rest of it, I don't think that means at the cost of uh, damaging somebody who's already hurting. We need a sensitivity to one another. I mean, there were, there were days, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fairly mild-mannered on the whole, although I'm getting worse as I get older. Um, and, um, and yet there were days when all of us really, you know, or something that happens, we want to scream and shout, don't we? You know, because it's, there's an injustice or, or, or whatever that, 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 you know... And we might well have justification for, for shouting and screaming, probably have of some sort. But remember these three stages of anxiety leads us to, to pray so that then eventually leads to peace. Paul says look for the good in everything, everything that's excellent or praiseworthy. Think about these things. Get our mind focused on these things even in the midst of the storms and, and the hurts and all the rest of it, try and get our minds focused on the things that are right, the things that are good, the things that are praiseworthy and uh, all the rest of it. Because the Bible then says that the God of peace will be with you. That's encouraging, isn't it? That we promise that the God of peace will be with us. See, we lose our peace when our focus is on the wrong things. Perhaps someone who we know well maybe has reacted wrongly to, to something we've said or, or whatever um, and it starts to break down relationship. Perhaps there's an injustice in our lives or there's been a long-standing disagreement with someone or we get caught up in difficult circumstances where, where we feel it helpless to change it. And that all those sorts of things cause us to lose our peace. But if that happens, we have to call upon God and we have to ask him, the God of peace, 
to come back into our hearts and our lives. Whatever we've done, whatever is going on, we can just say, Lord, if, if, I, you know, if we've hurt someone or we've da- da- um, got into a bad mood or we have got angry or whatever, just ask the God of peace to come in again and he will transform our lives and give us hope for the future even if the future is the next hour the next day the next week whatever he will give us um, hope for the future he will transform our lives and then the peace of God will come the peace of God that passes all understanding Amen.